Hey, I'm Yanis. Um, together with Adam Fowler, I'm part of the Hummingbird team. And um, I've been using server-side Swift since 2015, and I've loved it ever since. Ever since 2015, Swift has matured a lot, right? Um, I think we can all see, recognize the amazing leaps we've made as a community, and we get a lot of small things right. We do low memory, we uh, run a very low memory requirements, we have predictable performance. I think memory safety is great, and we have even more safety features coming up in server side Swift. But we also get the major things right. We have native database drivers that are written in Swift. We have uh, distributed actors, we have ergonomic APIs, and the ecosystem keeps maturing, I think, day by day. But Swift has changed a lot ever since. And by that I mean Swift has changed towards structured concurrency. Structured concurrency is an awesome paradigm that has offering a lot of, that's offering a lot of benefit for everyone in the ecosystem. And although there are some rough edges, especially around iOS, I think it's been excellent on server-side Swift, and we've been early adopters across the board. Um, so server-side Swift is awesome thanks to structured concurrency. But structured concurrency has been retrofitted so far. Um, because we have our, uh, our history in Swift Neo, a lot of the APIs that we use are uh, using Event Loop Future still, many libraries still use a lot of uh, Swift Neo primitives under the hood. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, we lose a lot of uh, uh, features that Swift ca has to offer nowadays that we can't leverage in a, in a Swift Neo world yet. Um, so in addition to all of that, we can, we've learned so much more about building frameworks that we can do so much more, more. We've learned so much about building web frameworks and building with Swift that I think it's time for the next step for server-side Swift. And then with that, we're building Hummingbird 2. Hummingbird 2 is the first Swift 6 web framework and has been released a couple weeks ago. We've had it uh, ready around January earlier this year for beta builds, and we've been building on top of it, refining it ever since. And after nine months of polish and more gradual improvements, we, think we thought it was finally ready in September. So there are three main pillars when it comes to Hummingbird 2. We have, we, the three main pillars are modern tooling, modular architecture, and high performance. And of course, we leverage the rich ecosystem that Swift has to offer, and the redesigned APIs in Hummingbird 2 will make your life even better than before. So let's dive into what that means. First of all, we're a Swift 6 web framework. That means we're 100% concurrency. We don't retrofit anything anymore. We're all about Swift 6. Next, we don't have any event loop futures. As, as much as we can, we try to hide Swift Neo as an implementation detail, which is right, right where the ecosystem is going. In addition, we're leveraging new tools such as Swift Service Lifecycle, and uh, we are doing much, much more uh, where we can leverage Swift 6 and Swift as a whole. When it comes to modern tools, we support Swift HTTP types. This is the new HTTP library by Apple, which unifies the HTTP standards in, a Swift in the Swift ecosystem, so that we no longer need to separate HTTP interpretation between iOS or backend, different backend frameworks with their own interpretation. So everything can be more interoperable through these types. Next. We have, um, uh, we're completely leveraging task cancellation and graceful shutdown uh, through Swift Service Lifecycle, which will enable your services to be more reliable as even during shutdown and under uh, upgrades. And Swift task cancellation will allow you to uh, cancel outstanding workloads when necessary, so that when a user is no longer interested in downloading a file, let's say they're downloading, I don't know, a big Xcode build, um, you're not actually still streaming all of that Xcode data in your server in memory, but because of async sequences, everything is streamed on demand with back pressure. And at the same time, if a user is no longer interested in the data, you can r remove all of the work that you're spawning. So all of this is great, but that m must surely cost a lot more code to implement, right? But that's not the case. So in some situations, especially when streaming, it can take up to eight times less code to do the same thing. And because of uh, async sequences and the generics involved, you barely need to uh, think about the specifics of streaming anymore. It's really easy to consume sequences in, a, in structured concurrency, and it's even easier for you to leverage them throughout with different, in between different libraries. 
So Hummingbird is also all about modularity. We provide a basic framework with Hummingbird as a core, with HTTP1 support, routing, middleware, everything you need to build your next web app. But at the same time, we also offer HTTP2, WebSockets, AWS Lambda, and gRPC integrations, and even Open API Generator. But these are all added on top. The benefit is that you don't pay compile time whenever you're uh, building your basic web application. So if you don't need HTTP2, you don't compile it. If you don't need WebSockets, you don't compile it. And this has severe ben great benefits across the ecosystem, while also making sure that Hummingbird is extensible for the future of the web. So how easy is it to extend Hummingbird? Well, to build a, an integration with, with other frameworks, it's a bit of work. But for you as an end adopter, it's fairly straightforward. A single line of code can replace the HTTP1 server with HTTP2. That's great. Now I can leverage Hummingbird for all of my apps. But is it performant? And it definitely is. So Hummingbird is not uh, shying away from performance, although there are definitely some improvements we can make. For example, thanks to the modularization, we've been able to reduce the binary size by two times compared to my previous apps in Vapor 4, and I hope Vapor 5 will follow suit. Next, because we don't build the dependencies we don't need, it's a lot faster to build your first app from, uh, from a clean build. And at the same time, you're also getting a good throughput. Now, Hummingbird 1 was faster than Hummingbird 2, and I think we made a good trade-off in uh, moving towards the future of the ecosystem while still keeping the door open to add performance improvements coming up. So we're definitely excited about adding even more performance improvements together with everyone in the ecosystem involved. But this is only the beginning. Hummingbird 2 is a brand new framework now, and we've been sitting on it for a long time, but it's definitely ready to get used. Although we, are, we have so much more planned in stock. For example, a recent pull request that I published, make sure that you can uh, create, uh, extend the routing framework so that you can add off groups where you statically know, based on the context in your request, that a user is authenticated and what their identity and you can go even further and authenticate them as an admin, wrap it in a separate context type, and now your functions can specify that they will only be able to be called by privileged users. So by explicitly defining that your, your function of choice, your route is only accessible by the privileged context, you, you can ensure that nobody else can enter your route, even if they're, if they're already logged in. So this makes middleware even more powerful than before, using the power of generics in Swift and the static type checking. So it's very hard for, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to uh, write a stable and re reliable system statically. So there's never a better time to get started with server-side Swift, especially now that this is released and Swift 6 has been released. So get started now. We have a, an example repository of 20 plus examples and growing. These are small projects but, and big projects, including all kinds of frameworks like APNS, Fluent, uh, Vapor JWT kit, but also other ecosystem libraries like Mongo Kitten, OPI API generator. We're already, we're already seeing a lot of adoption in the community all around, and we have an active Discord server where people are discussing new PRs, but also uh, the future directions where we want to go. And finally, you can ask for help if you're getting stuck. Thank you.